Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials moving us from electromagnetism to optics. This is video number 14, and it's number 7 in a subsection of Maxwell's equations. Specifically, I'm going to discuss plane waves. The previous video to this, number 13, where I discussed, excuse me, I discussed solving the wave equation. So, what we're going to do now is discuss plane waves. So, a plane wave is perhaps the simplest example of a three-dimensional wave. It exists at a given time when all the surfaces, uh, excuse me, when all the surfaces upon a disturbance are a constant phase and they therefore form a set of planes and each are generally perpendicular to the propagation of direction. They're, they're quite practical and the reason they're quite practical is because it's the readily produced, optical devices readily produce plane waves. Okay, so let's first of all look at a diagram and see if we can discuss it further. So let's imagine, for example, we have our three-dimensional space. Let's say we have y here, we have z up here, and we have x down here. And let's say, for example, we have the electric field propagating in a certain direction. And let's say it's going in this direction here. So I'm going to give the direction for the or direction of propagation. I'm going to call it k. I'm going, it's a vector, of course, because it's giving us a direction of propagation. So next, we're talking about plane waves. So all the points are constant phase. So let's draw a plane. Now, my drawing isn't usually great, but I'm going to try my best here, OK? So, so there's a plane. And this plane is perpendicular to our, our propagation vector k, all right? So let's define. I don't know, let's define two, two vectors on this, on this particular plane. So let's define, we'll put these in orange. So let's say we have a point here and we have a point here. So we're gonna connect these to the origin, like so. So I'm gonna call this vector here R and this vector here R0. And they're, they're, I suppose you need to give them directions if they're going to be vectors. And finally, I'm going to have another vector, r minus r0. OK, so the points here are going to be x0, y0, z0. And the points up top are simply going to be x, y, z. Okay, I hope you can you can see what's going on here. Now my diagram I know is a bit messy, but it's yeah I'm sure you, I'm sure you can understand it. Now, if we begin at some arbitrary origin O and then end at some point x y z, we can be anywhere in space. Okay, so what we're trying to do I suppose really is work out what is the definition of the, a plane being perpendicular to our plane uh, to our propagation vector k. Well, we can use the the dot product. So if the vector r minus r0 dotted with k is equal to 0, then at all points we are perpendicular to k. So that will give us all the points on the plane perpendicular to k. So k, of course, is a vector as well and has k sub x in the i hat direction, it's k sub y in the j hat direction, and k sub z in the k hat direction. Note, by the way, that this k, the propagation vector, is different to k, the k-hat vector. They, they just happen to be holding the same value. Okay, now I suppose if this, this particular equation here, r minus r0 dot k is equal to 0, holds true when we're at the origin. But more generally what we can say is that k dot r is equal to a constant, and that gives us a set of, a series of planes. By adjusting the constant a, we're able to get all the planes which are perpendicular to k, and that gives all the possible wave fronts. So where do we go from here? How is this useful to us? So let's just write it once more, that k dot r is equal to a constant a. Now, we know that the, the wave front, or excuse me, we know that the, uh, the excuse me, the, uh, the wave is going to be periodic. We know that if you move a wavelength, you're going to come back to where you started, or if you go 
go around 2 pi, you're going to go back to where you started. We know that at this stage. Okay, so let's just rewrite it. So let's say the, the wave function psi capital, a psi function of r, okay, it'll be the same if we started r but we add one wavelength. Now, unfortunately, not fortunately, we also have to take into account that we're dealing with vectors here. So we need to give the wavelength a direction. We need to have a, a, a you know, we have to move in a certain direction. So we use the, the unit vector. We draw, we'll say, the vector k. There's our propagation vector. But we divide it by the magnitude of k, like that. And that gives us the direction. That gives us the correct direction. So if we look at this, this is the, this is the condition for moving along the, uh, along the, the, the perpendicular to the direction of propagation and having the periodicity. So let's, let, you know, so let's uh, manipulate this a small bit. We're going to get, let's say, capital A times e to the i k dot r, okay, because that's our wave, is going to be capital A e to the i k, and we need to dot that with r plus lambda k over the magnitude of k like that. Okay. Now where do we go from here? Well, we can use the property of, of exponentials. So we'll have capital A e to the i k dot r. And we need to multiply that by e to the i lambda k. Now, for this to be true, we must have the following. We must have that e to the i lambda k is equal to 1, is equal to e to the i 2 pi. And therefore, the magnitude of the propagation vector is equal to 2 pi over lambda. Now, if you remember back to our previous video on waves, we showed that k is equal to 2 pi, uh, 2 pi over lambda. But the, but the difference was, at that time, the reason we used k was in order to make the argument of our cosine dimensionless. Now what we found is that same value k all, is 2 pi over lambda, but it, it gives us the direction of propagation of our wave. So that's why we call it the propagation vector. So it comes about by, uh, I suppose it comes about through the periodicity of the wave, and it, by enforcing that k dot r is a constant, what we get is a series of wave fronts, plane wave fronts, perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Now I'm going to try and draw this, and let's see what happens. So let's say there's our sinusoidal wave. Let's say we have a wave front here. So this might be psi, psi is equal to zero. You can see we have a series of wave fronts, and each of these wave fronts will have they will be all at constant phase. So along here, all the points along here will be it will be points of constant phase. Alright? So that's all I've got to say about that. So thanks for watching. Please pass it down to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment on the box below.